When I wake up with a 2 inch raging bunner, I think of Fallout New Vegas. When I eat my cold spaghettios in a paper bowl, I think of Fallout New Vegas. When I cry myself to sleep every night, well, you get the picture. At one point in time, the same amount of thoughts surrounded another franchise, Borderlands, specifically Borderlands 2, for its numerous weapons, sexual innuendos, and a beautiful genderless robot with a sword and a fetish for going incognito. I thank you for your kindness and sincerity. Now let's kill some stuff. Can you beat Fallen of Vegas as Zero from Warlands? For those of you who have no clue what the duck is going on, the premise of this challenge is simple. I kill things using an overabundance of stealth boys and looking hella sexy while doing so. This is going to be a long one, comrades, so tighten your seatbelts, ensure your butt plugs are in the right place, and get ready for a wild case of diarrhea. I wake up to a man who should have stayed in Vault 22 to avoid saving me before telling him that my name was one less than the sum of sine squared of theta and cosine squared of theta. Not even 30 seconds into this run, I trash the whole idea of Zero's gender and choose female. I will most likely refer to Zero in this script as a he, but honestly, when you guys see the tight latex outfit that I have planned for this video, you'll purse those lips faster than your mom's vagina. Zero is known for being squishy and highly agile. That said, all Vault Hunters require a good bit of both luck and skill if they're going to survive out here in these frigid ways for long. Nicely obliterated, pal. Guns, melee, and sneak were selected for the tag skills. If you doubt this choice, there's the door. Logan's loophole and skilled are great for any challenge runs. That said, Zero is inhumanly fast and a fantastic murderer. To exemplify this fact, I will be utilizing drugs to roleplay his increased abilities. I contemplate whether or not I should have to eat and drink this run and decide that even if it goes against Zero's manner, the extra challenge of slow healing is an essential part of any playthrough. After looting the Doc's house, I take off and head for the schoolhouse for the early game Stealth Boy. Zero's signature weapon, without getting too complicated, is an energy blade. A machete is not an energy blade, but if Zero was placed in this situation, I'm sure he would be willing to widen his weapon choices. After grabbing the sneaking device, I talk with Chet and drop off any unwanted gear and start making my way out of town. I spend a majority of the start of the game just walking to get to the gear that I will use for this run, so it's no surprise that I take the shortcut through Hidden Valley in Black Mountain. Because I was going to be siding with House this run, I also decided to pop by the Eldorado substation to save me a couple extra steps later. Excellent. Zero isn't always a total dick, so I decided not to trigger this sexy specimen. If you're familiar with this game, you already know the armor I'm going for. While not as powerful as Fallout 3's stealth suit, this BDSM gear will allow me to look the part of an assassin with a massive wedgie. The same look that Zero manages to pull off. I pass by a den of drug dealers in a hostel before killing some yellow bully monks. Fortunately, the subspecies didn't appear strong enough to be able to throw objects at me, so I was able to put them down and net some black combat armor from this wreck caravan site that everyone goes to. I killed my first man, my goal in life is to masculize women and feminize men, before leveling up, dumping points into guns and grabbing more strength. While getting to whatever I was going to next, it's really hard to say with how much tasty kush I'm on, I killed a few homeless people with a submachine gun. Technically, given that Borderlands has no weapon restrictions, I could use any weapon. That said, Zero is often seen in game art with a sword, a submachine gun, and a sniper rifle. These will be the main weapons of this run. I talk with Pacer, the king, the dude with hemorrhoids so bad that he saw a physician in middle school, half of Rex face hole, a chick from Van Warp Tour, someone who looks like my dad's thumb, a dude whose whole existence is to open up doors when a key would suffice, and a rather kind woman. Speaking about women, remember when I said you wouldn't regret me choosing female for this run? Oh yeah, baby girl. After climaxing for the third time in this video, it is revealed that there is some trouble for the king, and I fix it using my face hole. What does that mouth do? Solve problems such as erectile dysfunction. I grab some caps from the king for being such a good human being. Man, I wish this many people talked to me in real life before leveling up twice. Science was increased both times and the comprehension perk was grabbed. After taking a quick gander at some clouds, I get a rifle from Sunny and proceed to shoot loads all over some bottles on the fence. You're going to quickly find out, if you haven't already, that I play like I have ADHD. I don't know why, but at least I can aim relatively well. I get skills for kills. Such a profitable life. I am rich, biatch. I do some trading with Trudy while a scary guy with a pepper in his left pocket oversees the conversation. It makes me so uncomfortable looking at him that I improve my charisma in hopes that I can avoid being that guy at parties. If I ever get invited to any parties other than my two-year-old niece's graduation from diapers party, that is. After coming back from a 12 second poop, yes I eat a lot of fiber, I grab the snow globe in Mormon Fork before talking with someone who shaves their armpits compulsively.
Hello, my name is Jessup. I'm 37, a member of the Great Cons, and I love shaving my armpits if I have any free time. What is the most you've ever shaved your armpits in a day? Probably 82 times. How do you feel about Jessup shaving his armpits as much? It shocks me every time I see blood on the sink. It just makes me worry as a mother, you know? Over at the Crimson Caravan, I get a radio thingy that I won't be using this run and speak with McLafferly for work. Zero's willing to do anything if he thinks that there's a challenge behind it. In the wasteland, so far everything is a challenge. Becoming the courier, as the courier, I deliver the invoice to this mock-off version of Dr. Doolittle. I head back to the friendly neighborhood cougar. She totally hit on me, by the way. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can I be sued for defamation of a fictional character? Either way, I heard she was hella tight from our boy Victor. He said that he lassoed her up and spread irradiated coconut oil all over her feet. It sounded kinda hot, but who am I to judge? Sneaking into the Krusty Krab, I steal the formula for the Krabby Patty. No, I don't watch Spongebob. Only an idiot would laugh at that show. <laughs> <laughs> After blacking out, I find that Zero was in the Atomic Wrangler. I'm not sure how he ended up here, but due to his involvement in Bunkers and Badasses, I would say gambling isn't totally against his nature. After all, it is a challenge. With more than enough caps to pass the credit check, I walk inside the circumcised building before handing in my snow globes. With my newfound riches, I buy a mediocre weapon from Vendertron and check myself out. After all, Zero is using a voice modulator, right? Let us get to work. Orthostatic hypertension caused me to once again pass out with roughly 9,000 more caps in the old piggy bank. I wish I could say that these clips are out of order, but they really aren't. Talking with a guy with my paper pole as a helmet from SpaghettiOs from earlier, I learned that Prim has a problem. Here's some cinematic action that I never have in my videos because I think it's a great way to get killed. Going through this area with the equipment that I have now is a little bit of a joke and I have really no clue why I'm here. Ah, uh, there's at least one crossover to real life. Bumping up my guns, I shoot the deputy when I really should have shot the sheriff. Over at the patrol station, I killed a few more him-hers. This was, again, an easy task. An anti-material rifle will carry most players for the rest of the game, but the stealth armor is absolute trash. With durability less than my grandma with stage 4 colon cancer, it's no surprise that it breaks every 3 seconds. Popping inside, I get the Guns and Bullets book to improve my gun skill. The comprehension perk is goaded with a sauce, by the way. With my recoil scoped in on the NCR camp, I speak with Cass and convince her to sell her caravan. Scared of some ants, I become her knight in latex armor and put the numerous legged creatures out of their happy existences. Unworthy opponents. Getting done talking with a man with a sexy handlebar mustache, I tell Cass the same thing, the roads. Let's see here, never eat soggy waffle. East are clear. Old Ben gives me some tips on how to give the best oral. I already knew quite a lot, but he definitely solidified some things in my mouth. Feeling like the job was unfinished, I see Henry Jameson brutally murdered after he tells me he wants a severance package. It was not a challenging kill. Returning to the Joker's sister, I get another job, this time to clear out the bottling cat place. I make my way across the Mojave, disarming traps as I go. Eventually, I made it inside the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters and put a few robots out of their misery. I felt pretty powerful doing most of these quests now with the equipment that I had, so it's no surprise that you can absolutely beat Fallout New Vegas as Zero. That said, there are more challenges that are littered across the wasteland, and Zero has a lust for challenges that won't be satiated. I grab more gun skill as well as the Super Slam perk before shutting off the circular object with the Divot Generator. Caps. There's the word I was looking for. Why So Serious looks pleased with my actions, and I go to the same people I just stole from to spend some caps. Zero has a really cool blade that he uses on several occasions, and is his basic melee attack in Borderlands 2. I decided that I needed it. New equipment. I grab Gehina from this beautiful robot. While I still will be using the rifle for a majority of this run, it is nice to have. I see our best friend George and watch him take off in a different direction. I know not of his fate this very day, but I feel as though a hole has been ripped through my heart that will not heal. I know we couldn't Skype tonight, but that's alright. Good night, girl. I'll see you tomorrow. I talk with the people at the gate, and I talk with a woman who looks like a vagina or roast beef from Arby's, before convincing this fine gentleman that science is the way to go to kill ants. I use sleepy time to kill the ants before jumping down and placing the emitter. The rest is like stealing candy from a baby or child's play. I can never tell when to use which one. Raquel is more proud of me than my mom is, so I decided to sit there for three hours learning about the history of the boomers. Disappointed from not killing enough ants in the generator place, I shoot more until my heart's content. This haggard lady stopped me as I went to go inside and give me another job before this fantastic idiot gave me instructions. Ignacio gave me the other half of the puzzle, and I went outside. If you've ever played this quest, you may know that there's a landmine that is stuck underneath the floor that can still kill you. 
and this run I experimented with using a grenade, and it did the trick after showing the NCR that I'm just trying to fix their evident incompetence. After clicking buttons on that terminal, I go over to do the same thing to the other one. Any melee weapon combined with Super Slam becomes devastating, so the dogs don't stand much of a chance either. Before heading inside, I salvaged a few arrays for the Boomer Solar Farm. I killed the turrets from a position of stealth and make my way down to deal with Mr. Gutsy. My robot brother does get a shot off, almost killing me, so that's fun. I always really like doing this quest. Many of the traveling merchants sell both shells for shotguns, and those rip right through these guys. It pays to be prepared. Unfortunately, rifles don't have the same ammo type, so I just raw dog everything. I fix the generator with scrap metal and send the power to McCarran in the Las Vegas Strip, as instructed. I believe that most of the time Zero falls in order in the challenge rather than a moral compass, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. While waiting for the solar array to do its thing, the NCR trooper that should have talked to me at the strip followed me up through the death trap that is this tower. Have I told you guys that I love this game? Completing that lucky old son, I return to the boomers and repair the array for loyal. That seems to make everyone happy enough for me to be able to do more work. Dang, this reminds me of an office job that I once had. I grab the respirator from Jack and buy some explosive rounds in the nearby hangar from the boomer supply. While swimming to the plane, I find out that stealth armor and the respirator stacks, making me look even cooler. We'll just consider this one of the cool skins that Zero wears and call it a day. I throw both of the ballast and the winged beast before watching it float to the surface. Pearl was ecstatic, allowing me to grab the support of the boomers for the war when the time came. Sneak and Finesse were grabbed at level 10. I spoke with Major D-Bag about fiends in the area. These fiends have killed many members of the NCR, so surely that they would prove to be a worthy foe. Hook Hook was the first to fall, though I had to resort to using some Kims or adrenaline as we roleplay for this run. Turbo is so cool and is a drug that I will be abusing this playthrough a lot to simulate Zero's fast reaction times. Violet and her pack were far easier than Cook Cook as she was almost dead after the first shot. A challenge was not found here. While in the area of the Great Cons, I discovered Red Rock Canyon and purchased some more drugs from Jack. Given that I was a friend of the Cons, I also purchased some more ammo for my rifle and sleepy time. Hopping back to the fiend killing business, I picked off Driver Nefi and his gang of ruffians before they even knew I was there. D-Bag was pleased with this outcome and unfortunately took the mutilated heads from my collection. I heard rumors of Black Mountain being overrun by these strange mutants, so I made my way up to the stormy mountain before slicing them to bits with a blade of fire. The one who wielded a great launcher froze in the face of death as a clutter of sound followed the fall to the floor. Rondo was hello attracted with that big eye and reminded me of Zero's non-cannon head. Tabitha, a mutant with a wonderful wig on her head, was pleased by this. A random ghoul also was grateful, but I had no interest in a follower. My challenges were to be faced alone. After walking out the door, I grabbed Barter and the Heavyweight perk. I was disappointed that I couldn't fight the Green Dragon at Novak, so I made my way further south where I learned an interesting tactic. I stealth meleeed one of the raiders and all of them grouped together to investigate. Swapping to my anti-material rifle with explosive rounds, I killed the rest of them with one shot. Triple kill! Now when I heard Marches of Red with a terrible ability to use modern medicine, I traveled through Camp Searchlight to see it myself. Finding Anders strung up on the cross, I realized that the Legion should be wiped out. Perhaps their exploits and reasoning of fear should be appreciated. I quickly found out that no challenge was to be had with these weaklings. Blasting them through the ass with my heavy rifle and blade proved uneventful. The slaves no longer had reason to cower, and with the key to the cowlers, were able to return to NCR territory. Their supposed commander, a phoenix, went out as any bird of flame should, a great ball of fire. Returning to Diane to tell her of the news relating to Anders, she sends me to Don Hostler with a package. Pleased that I could follow basic orders, she gives me a cup with a succulent in it and tells me to deliver it to a botanist by the name of Motor Runner. I kill more fiends on the way into his home with a mix of armaments. They proved an adequate challenge, but I was sure that there was more to Mojave than just psychos. Getting inside the greenhouse, I give the treasured plant to the overseer. I love that this suddenly became the plot to Wally after I stopped wanting to say drugs. Diane was pleased and taught me a trick to blind an enemy with sand. I thought it was cheap, so I never ended up using it. Returning to Major 9, I repair my armor. This proved pointless as it broke before I even finished the next area. But at least I didn't spend a majority of my childhood alone. Vault 22 is one of my least favorite areas in the game based on how many hours it took me to clear out the first time. That said, I've come to appreciate it a little bit more now that I know where things are. I sneak past the shit-stained walls and manage to get to the terminal to open up the doors. As it turns out, fire is a useful weapon against plants. If I could animate at all, just know that I would have a fire-type Pokemon attacking a plant Pokemon with fire so that it could be super effective. One key card and a lot of murder of miniature hulks later, I download the data from the terminal in the lower level before returning to Dr. Hildren of the NCR. For whatever reason, I didn't get the optional quest to find Keeley until after coming back to Camp McCarran. Needless to say, I didn't go back. 
A powerful group of weapons merchants, the Van Graffs, looked as though that they would prove to be strong adversaries in the event that they would become hostile, so I made the decision to murder them all. This actually proved a little tricky with the tight space. I do know that you can just blow this place up, but again, the whole point of this run is to be slightly challenging. Regardless, they died and I lived. I chose Mr. House for this run as he offers a substantial amount of money up front, something that I would need if I was going to maintain my equipment. Besides, Mr. House seems like the most, hey, I just do what I'm told ending to the game that most Vault Hunters would follow. I convince Swank to return my equipment and isolate Benny. I do try to sneak up on him to get a kill with my blade, but his plot armor perception prevented me from doing so. As a result, I killed him with sleepy time before he even got off his chair. I grab Barter and Mr. Sandman at level 14. I haven't grabbed Mr. Sandman in a long time because I always thought it was a waste of a perk, but grabbed it this run because I thought it would be cool to spice things up a little bit. Spoiler alert, it was a waste of a perk like I thought. Bulpus and Colta, a member of that guy's club that really likes salads, forgave me for killing two dozen men, so that was nice. Once inside the Lucky 38 again, I give Mr. House the platinum ship and watch the demonstration again. Oh my god! Sometimes I hate my life, but at least I have friends that will always be there when I need them. Heading to the salad bar, I try to enter the arena only to realize that I'm a woman. This upsets me a great deal, so much so that Otho had a terrible aneurysm after breathing near me. This, however, makes me happy. The head lettuce ordered me to blow up stuff, but I didn't like his mojo, so I decided to continue working for House. The robots in the bunker were killed almost as easy as the BNK3R with four. I totally farmed my first zero to level 72 using this method, one upgrade to the robot army later, and I was back to Mr. House. He told me of a clan known as the Boomers, which I had already met. I convinced Pearl to support Mr. House almost as easy as I was convinced to be pegged for the first time. The Umerta sequence was up next, so let's keep this in the groove like smooth little babies, you dig? The receptionist spoke to me about a detective researching some sex offenders, the detective in question, Kachino, seemed to be hiding some information from me, so I stole his journal filled with research. He then told me that Clandidon and Troik were his suspects. Clandidon had a key pinched between his shoulder blades that allowed me to open up a safe that proved Kachino's suspicion. I gather the evidence before heading to Troik. As it turns out, he isn't a sex offender, but is actually a great guy that guides traffic to ensure that no children get hit. As a result of my questioning, he tells me that he no longer wants to work for Big Sal because he is rumored to be just as dirty as Clandon. Big Sal is willing to let him go, so I return to Troik to let him know the good news. He gave me some thermite in hopes that I could destroy the Emeritus for good. I plant the Miralex, and it isn't long that a giant explosion of diarrhea comes from the bathroom. What the fuck? I tell Kachino what went down, and he presents the data that he found on his end. The Emeritus needed to be removed that no one else could be terrorized by the Reign of Terror. Come on guys, we gotta go! Getting off the couch after a pleasant conversation allowed me to whip out what was hidden in the bulge of my pants. They died soon after I realized that I wasn't a woman after all. Mr. House was once again pleased by my efforts and he gave me the quest to kill the Brotherhood chapter in the Mojave. Putting that on the back burner, I go kill some things. I'm not really sure why I spent the next hour killing powder gangers at the NCR Correctional Facility and Monte Carlo Suites, but I did and I'm not afraid to say that I had fun while doing so. Stealth is really satisfying in this game, but having a build that can do both ranged and melee isn't something that I'm used to. I also wanted to take the time to thank all of you for your recent support on my videos. Over the past month, I have rapidly grown my channel and have gotten many wonderful comments. Thank you. It means a great deal. Finishing up at the suites, I stumbled my way into the Thorn. I spoke with Red Lucy about what this place stood for and found that its existence stood as my own. A challenge. I fought once in the arena against giant rad scorpions, but felt that that was far too easy. After offering my assistance in the matter of making the arena more challenging, she tells me to find giant mantis eggs. Returning to Vault 22, I began looking around for the things that that one woman pushed out of her holes as an Easter special. Finding them in the caves, I returned to Lucy and received payment. Her next objective for me was to find rat scorpion eggs east of Good Spring Cemetery. After killing a couple, I level up to level 16 and grab survival and pack rat. Zooming in on the nest, I find something to test my explosive bullets on. It is insanely nice to be able to do this much damage and not have to use a varmint rifle on everything. Lucy gives me even more caps in a quest to find fire geckos. Not having done this quest in particular for some time, I don't remember exactly where I need to head, but my marker does, so that's good. Occasionally fighting fire with fire, I make my way up to Boot Jack Cavern. I'm not going to coat this in white stuff. This got a little dicey at certain points. Fire geckos aren't a joke with slow firing armaments. Regardless, I was able to kill my way through the nest and by association get to the eggs. After regrouping at the Khan's Armory, I return to Red Lucy. This time she sends me to hunt a group of individuals that have the same abilities that I do. Night Stalkers. Not only getting to this cave is a little bit tricky with where it is on the map, but Night Stalkers can easily kill me in 2-3 hits. 
Getting lucky, I managed to kill the weaker ones before seeing that the legendary Night Stalker was actually stuck in the cave's wall. What a shame. I would have liked dying multiple times to their beautiful teeth and claws. Once again, finishing the fetch quest, Hazors are up next. I waste 30 minutes on a path that wasn't in the right direction, fighting these stupid giant poison ass worshippers as I went. After actually finding where I was supposed to go, reloading textures and fighting another Kazador, I refill up on explosive rounds at the boomers and good old Vendi. I snuck most of the way there. Zero isn't a pussy, but he isn't stupid either. With the nest in my crosshairs, I finish off the rest of the flying devils before grabbing eggs and toting them back to Lucy. Impressive. Ori Junction is up next. The first time I did this, something rather strange happened and everyone ended up dead. We're going to pretend that that didn't happen and try again. I talked with Lewis to get some extra medical supplies, even though by the time I would need them I would already be dead. One fixed Snuffle's leg and a generator later, I entered the Brotherhood's bunker to show them my love for cross-dressing. You may be thinking that you missed something, but just know that I kept going in between Quarry Junction and the Brotherhood multiple times. Both sucked donkey genitalia. Nice. As someone who has played this game for close to a decade, I know that you can use the three key cards to blow up the bunker through self-destruction. Unfortunately, the scope of this challenge suggests that I don't always take the easy way out for these quests. I tried several times to kill the Brotherhood, but none of the attempts were actually clean, unfortunately. Buying more ammo and taking my rage out on some ants, I make my last trip to T-Bone Junction. I kill many deathclaws from afar with usually a zero's handful of bullets. Once killing enough to make my way inside, I climb the tower and take out a few more. This process was slow, but I was able to do enough damage that I didn't have to worry about dying every three seconds. When two of the vicious beasts approached my tower of life, I jumped off ensuring that I tucked and rolled. Realistically, Zero would have been able to climb down the tower without a problem. After the dude pathfinds to me, I put him out of its torturous existence. After climbing up the other side of the tower, I pinched the nipples off of a few other compatriots, killing them immediately. If you are ever in a close encounter with a deathclaw, remember, stop, drop, and pinch their nipples. It gets them aroused every time like Transpoon does for me. Then I made a little fucky wucky. I jumped off the tower again using quicksames to my advantage, but I did so without looking around. Spawning back in, I see the alpha male deathclaw less than 20 feet away. Taking every single stimulant and depressant in my inventory, I fire about a dozen explosive rounds into this hunk of meat. When I tell you my butt was clenched this whole time, I mean to tell you that my ass was hanging out like it does every time I wear gray sweatpants and go on my slutty walk through the retirement home. It makes me feel so endowed with the compliments that I hear from both old women and men. I swear I even heard a turtle telling me that it wanted to slap my ass and make me his. Grabbing the eggs after nearly 40 minutes of humping the waistband of my trousers, I explode all over Red Lucy and she gives me a shotgun I don't use. Still not sure about charging to the bunker, I grab Rex and the table he is stuck in before making the trek to Jacobstown. I'm gonna let you guys enjoy the environment here for a few seconds. Stop it. Get some help. Going inside to talk with Dr. Henry, I give him Violetta's brain so that Rex gets the zoomies. While the Legion's dog brain is my preferred ending, I'm only doing this quest for some XP and won't be utilizing him at all this run. After dismissing the dude in the furry costume, the good doctor gives me a quest to go into a nearby cave to find out the source of Night Stalker's power. Going outside, I fix a predicament with money. The answer is always money, by the way. I return to Dr. Henry with the chewed up feces. Sorry, people, poop has a great texture. And tell him about the discovery I made in relation to the stealth boys. Keen doesn't like this very much, so he tells me that he's going to take all my spaghettios away from me. This triggered my fight response, and quickly cut down all of his men with the speed of a gazelle running away from a lion or whatever it is that they run away from. If I was smart, which I'm not, I would have grabbed Lily as a companion, and told her to wait for increased stealth boy duration. I however gave very little ducks and decided to move on with my clothes pinning session. I love it when they're placed between the folds of my hands and on my ears. Bruh, chill. I grab Boone's beret, loot the safe for the bill of sale, and take a female dog out to my arch nemesis, the dino. I found out during this quest that I can wear the beret, root breather, and the stealth armor all at once. Needless to say, I felt good when the shot rang out into the Crawford's skull. Boone was also impressed. I dealt with some golden geckos by a radical journal before heading into Repcon. Come fly with me was next on the to-do list. I beat the meat off the bone of the ghouls, but the glowing ones definitely still had some vigor. I listened to the voice of a 30 year long smoker before talking with Jason. He tells me about the Bonnie board and Firestone having some work for me. As it turns out, there's a group of blue man group enthusiasts in the basement who have a hatred for ghoul snipers in their turf. I kill the sniper and tell them about the good news. They are frustrated that they couldn't do it themselves, but are glad that they no longer feel trapped in existential dread, allowing them to leave their mom's basement. Returning to Jason allows the walkers to go down to the basement. 
The smoker I mentioned earlier had me go get a part from old lady Gibson at the scrapyard. Before long, I had returned with a part and he told me that I was the one who had to press the launch button. Why the person who has no experience pressing buttons has to be the one to trigger a launch, I have no idea, but I do as I'm asked, completing the Come Fly With Me quest. Before doing the Beyond the Beef or whatever the Ultra Lux quest is called, I stared at the women in the fountain. I talked with Margarita and Mortimer revealing that there is, you guessed it, another detective looking for information. This time the detective was dead and I resorted to using sleepy time to kill a dude in front of a man who has nothing left to live for. Things are getting stranger every day. I talk with Chauncey and kill someone who also calls themselves an assassin, but is nowhere near my caliber. Heading downstairs for some more clues like Scooby and the gang, I plant an explosive in a random dude's pocket, just because I could before rescuing Ted from Antarctica. My nipples were hard as a rock while I was in here. I get him back to whoever the heck this guy is before grabbing a lockpick and the perk Vim's good eatin'. While doing that quest in the casino, I had the great idea of stealth killing everyone in the bunker with Mr. Sandman. It went terribly. For whatever reason, including the person you are killing, wakes up when you go to kill your target. This utter bullshit angered me to the point that I said screw my collection of chems and drugs and used everything that I had to kill the Brotherhood. I fired hundreds of rounds by the time that everything was said and done. This was miserable and I can't understate that. I edit my footage as a record and I still have roughly 30 minutes of me walking around in stealth and dying over and over again that I'm just going to delete completely. The last person to go was the armory guard before I was notified that everyone was cleared out. I told Mr. House of my adventure, and rather than giving me some time to rest and recover from all of these thick plasma holes littering my body, he sent me to my next orgy. No, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? No, no, what are you doing? This one would have the president as a special guest. I killed this guy, this guy, and contemplated doing the same to myself as I watched the vertebrate fly away. I break into the power station that I discovered earlier and redirect something to something else before agreeing to the final battle. I killed a few things with my rifle during the first part of the battle, but the coolest part was actually remembering to film the boomers dropping the firebomb. Sneaking inside the room with the way more monitors than I have, I talk with Mr. House before hitting a button that does the thing and walking through the big ass door of the Legate's camp. I picked off as many people as I could before pushing towards the Legate himself. Now most people would get at least one stealth shot off the poor guy before actually engaging him, Zero is not most people. He would engage the enemy head on like a true Chad. The battle lasted roughly 4 minutes and a majority of it was just cleaning up the dickweeds that followed the legate earlier. I did use a lot of drugs during this fight which made me glad that I had allied with the great cons so that I could buy drugs from them. The most important drug that I used was corn. That's right folks. It's cold. I do have to try this last battle twice because of how quickly the rangers all shot at me the first time, but once they aggroed the robots, it was a piece of cake. This proves that yes, you can beat Fallout New Vegas as zero from Borderlands. I hope you guys enjoy this unique spin on a challenge runs. It was definitely nice roleplaying a little bit to see what zero would have actually done in different cases, while still having a good laugh here and there. If you did enjoy this video, consider subscribing and shoving the like button up your urethra. Have a good one.